hope it gets like, ironed out moving forward. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, right. oh, wait, hold up. I think we're all in the building. Everybody yeah, in I the think, building. I think we all touched down. We definitely all touched down. Yes. <clears throat> like I said, yes. so, <laughs> like, like I said, my fault, I didn't mean to cut you off, man. But like I said, man, I just appreciate y'all joining in on the chat and shit like that. Like I said, we, we got to have a platform for ourselves. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we, we got to do something. Um, And like I said, like, it, it gives everybody a, a voice. It gives everybody who feels like like they bring something to the table some a, a voice. Um, like I said, Sherry took it away. Like I said, I'm just I'm just spitballing here. Like you know, I don't got a script. This is real, real off the top of the dome type shit. So right. just real, real emotion, raw shit. And, and so real to that's that's something that I've always felt strongly about. Is like that's why my name is this that new new. I always look for the next thing coming, whether it's music or technology. I had the 36 uh -huh. chambers on ice before anybody else did in my little, you know school or whatnot so in finding new artists that are not only awesome i guess you could say but yeah. contributing yeah. something and something conscious like ot the detonator the single we have coming out it's called the, the coming uh, and it's live and you know i'm lucky yeah. to have uh, black seven building um west coast killer b and then pin Wu, you know uh of the east coast you know chapter of if you will and then of course Comrade Camp all day. I can't help but say it. Right. I'm just, we might have to edit it out, but OT, you know, with Comrade Camp and move with Comrade Camp. And I'm just really, again, glad, glad to be here. So let's <laughs> go ahead and break it down. Uh, we'll talk about projects and everything after that. And then um, another thing Heavy was thinking is like, if you have anything in the news, like hip hop that you want to share and add, it's just really about creating a dialogue and like a platform, like he was saying. Um, and so he's going to moderate. I'm just going to be the, you know, extra guest host over here. And uh, yeah, so we'll go from there. Um, right, right. Let's go first, Larry. Yeah, definitely, definitely, fellas, introduce yourself. Uh, you could definitely tell me what you've been working on, what you've been worked on. I listen to your music. I, anybody who anybody who I got up here, I listen to. Um, I was just, I just listened to um, We Illin from Miami you know mean? Old. Like, I, I, trust me, I, I did my homework. So fellas, introduce yourself, man. Well, whoever decides to go first. I, or you, you want to go next, or who want to go next, or you guys want me to go? Uh, I've been working with this dude right here, my man. Been a maverick, never been to Dallas. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's right there. You know, like, <laughs> right. Fire, you know, we let them bells ring in case we got to make a black mess. You know what I mean? Matter of fact, it's crazy because I'm working on a song that me and Pin Wu just did, man. I finally did the final touches that I'm trying to release, like, like now. But anyhow, I'm Black Seven, Black Seven I, West Coast Killer B. I'm CEO of Kia Music. Um, yeah, basically, man, we just, uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I fell in depression for a minute with the state of hip hop because how it's going. So I feel that we have to be the mavericks of, of, of trying to bring the realization of real hip hop back to the uh, platform and, uh, and stage. And that's what, you know, as a killer B man, what we trying to do and accomplish. Respect, respect. That's, that's a hundred. That's a hundred. Also, right now, I'm also one, one third of new chapter, which is, you know, my group, which I, I put new chapter above my own, my personal stuff. Cause it's just, it's just a dope raw group that I got. Word. Respect. Understand it. Understand it. Hi, brother. All right. So uh, my name's O.T. The Detonator. Um, for people that haven't heard of me, I'm from the West Coast. Um, I'm from Pasadena, California. Um, Dina definitely in the house. I rap my city hard. Um, okay. um, I've been working with uh, Comrade Camp for the last uh, about, since, you know, late 2019. Um, Supreme Allah actually discovered me on Twitter. Um, so I did a lot of work with him. Um, I got to join out with him, with him and Beretta Nine from Killer Army right now. Um, I've been working the game for about 20 years. Um, I've done various tracks with many artists, Feel the Agony, Strong Arm Steady, uh, Rhyme Inspector, Percy Pete from the Bronx. So I love New York. Um, got a track coming out with uh, the legendary Insane Poetry uh, coming up uh, late October, actually. Uh, so I've been doing it for 20 years. Uh, I've been a cameraman behind the scenes for DJ Quick. Uh, work with him. 
and, and things like that. So, you know, I just, I just been around, um, you know, been around. I'm one of those, those, those cats, underground cats that's been around and do it for the love. I'm not really trying to do it for a mainstream audience. You know, I do it for the real underground. Right, respect. Guys, you yeah. see, so, so we kind of like all, all on that same page and we know what we want out of hip hop. We know where hip hop was and we just trying to understand where it is now. Um, so, so, like I said, um, I really wanted to, to to get some lyrics out, break down some lyrics. Uh, I, I kind of want to make it where we don't know who the other one is to try to guess who who it kind of sounds like, where the flow comes from. Um, yeah. But I, I also, like I said, any I, I'm going off the vibe and the energy. So anything niggas got to say, anything that, you know what I'm saying, don't be afraid to just cut in. Um, another thing is is hip hop homework. So I might say something that everybody know, like, oh, that's this dude. Like this this not challenge. Yeah, that's gonna happen. But everybody, like I said, like people watching don't know, like don't might not know who that is. Cause I know I know when I hang out with Supreme and he rapping, I'm like, oh who that? So and it happens all the time. So like like my my, my knowledge isn't as vast as anything. So like I like I said, Sherry, Sherry was breaking down a lot to me today. I was like, damn, like shit, like I, I need to listen more. So like I said, oh another thing is um when I do post um, I'm link, I'm link, link me to all your music, to all your pages, to everything, so everybody can find you and know what what you're working on, future, everything like that. So, wow. um, like Sherry, Sherry, I don't know if you want to take it away while I while I get my lyrics popping. I mean, okay, like, okay. So, does everybody have the you know the lyrics in mind? I feel like it's like I don't know, like it's like a card game. You gotta you gotta play the cards and all that. Uh, seeing what comes up. <laughs> Um, but I got, I got two things on deck. It depends on who comes with what right now. I have one thing on one screen, one thing on another. Definitely did my homework, um, in that regard. And like the thing about me too, like I said, after the show, um, I'm going to get each person's like top five, uh, artists that they like. We're going to build a playlist and we're actually going to brand that playlist along with your projects and music as well. So I'm going to start doing my live. We're actually going to start promoting that because honestly, that's where the movement comes from. You create change in your backyard. Like this has been a dream and a long time coming for me. And I really am glad to be rocking with y'all. Um, I'm ready whenever y'all ready. So you guys are the guests. I'm just the guest slash extra host, if you will. Uh, so you want to go from like, you know, top to bottom. I have OT. If you're ready, you ready? All right. So we, 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 we just, are we busting something or, or how's that going to work or what? How is that? It's, it's it's really up to you. Um, whether you have an artist in mind that you like, you appreciate, or whatever the case may be, you can spit your own shit. It really don't matter. Um, just like I said, it's whatever you feel comfortable with. Mm. When it comes to artists, you know, I like MF Doom. Mm. Yeah. Doom, Doom, Doom J Electronica. I think, honestly, yeah. J Electronica gets still slept on a lot, a lot. So I definitely feel that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would definitely go. Like he's definitely like I fuck with Doom. Okay, so I'm gonna come with the lyrics, and then I guess we'll talk about it, break it all down, and then we'll figure out, you know, what MC it's from. So I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with that. It's really hard because okay. I have really two choices. Um, both speak to not only my heart, but like one speaks to where hip hop is right now. I'm gonna have to come back to that one. I'm gonna go with this one that's in front of me. I used to cipher, I used to freestyle. I'm not gonna lie to you. This is gonna sound like go crazy, but I'm just gonna run with it because we just doing it live, right? So <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, so this one's they say the goodness in life belongs. Oh, they say the goodness in life belongs to those who believe. So I believe, yes. I start to think and then I sink into the paper. Like I was ink. When I'm writing, I'm trapped in between the lines. I escape to finish the rhymes. I start to think and then I sink into the paper like I was ink. When I'm writing, I'm trapped in between the lines. I escape when I finish. My pop was in love when they said he made me thought about for a second it was hard to see. I could hear it was sincere, it wasn't game or promotion. The entire affair is probably charged with emotion. When, co- when love called your heart, I guess you gotta pursue. Uh, what do you call it? 12, 11, 73, my life is testament. Praise the benevolent. Beneficent. I swear to God, I literally needed to practice that. But that's where I'm at. That's okay. my lyrics that I told for the meeting. All right. Of 
Pop Pop Warner. Okay. Uh, between the Good. two, that's that's where I'm at. That's that's my MC. He's my medicine next to my top five, always being Rakim, always number one. That's static. That never changes. Um, okay. But that's that's what I chose without the school and who that artist is. So you can break that down however you like. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So I'm at a loss because I don't know who the artist is. I don't know if you guys could guess it. Um, it sounds familiar. It sounds familiar. It's, that's I'm like, it sounds like I heard it before. I mean, like, I'm saying it, so it literally sounds like the lady who tried to like break down Nas's lyrics on an NPR show the other day. When I saw that, I was like, "What is this woman doing?" <laughs> 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 and it's all like, it, it's really like that. You do for God's sake. So, all right, I'm. A, I don't want to take a whole the thing. Uh, let's see. That's the that was the chorus. Let's let's go down a little bit. No, no, that's the verse, like refrain verse. Okay. So oh, another thing, another thing I definitely want to roll up my top five. I'm definitely interested to hear out hear out what your top five is. Um, okay. We definitely got to get that rolling because, like I said, oh, another thing, this playlist, man, that shit is important, man, because like they got to know what what the sounds are because we're all we're different demographics, we're different ages, so we all I know we're not gonna have the same taste in music, but we're gonna have, we're gonna like the same kind of like lyricist quality in a way because, like I said, MF Doom. That's my dude. You know understand? Like, like she said, yeah. Rakim. Like, I'm all, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. Like, you understand? So, like, I, I kind of feel a vibe already. Like, I already understand like where this is going. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Sherry, if you got that other verse that you, that you getting in on. I mean, wow. Why did I choose choose him of all things? Like, for real. Um. All right. So this will give it. This this little part will give it away. I shine with the rhythm. The black scar of Galactica. Your big number fatten, we ancient like the abacus. After us, I see most proceed to be trees. Sprouting leaves giving breeds to the to the we who we believe. I am C, which means I must cultivate the earth. Straight back, straight back, heart beats and hard work. I'll be the funky drummer to soften the hard earth. Amen, pray Allah, keep the soul and the heart clean. Amen. Pray the same thing again for all of my team from restoration to Fort Green on to Queens uptown to boogie down. Yo, just look around, shook up the world like Ali in six three. I'm reaching the height that you cannot be. I'm bringing the light, which you cannot. See. That's 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 where I'm at. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> OK, OK. Um, mm. I, I'm at a loss. I'm like two minutes away from cheating, man. I'm drowning, yo. Y'all gotta help me out over here. <laughs> me saying it doesn't help. All right, do I just give it up since like I'm, you know, I'm, gonna, like I'm, gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a guess. I might I might be wrong. Is that Brother J? No, actually, I I'm not even gonna lie. I should know who that is. Talk about homework. I need to be writing that down. Brother J, it doesn't help when I say it. That was a good one, Black? Brother J. Okay. Here's a, here's a clue. Black Star Galactica. Black Star. Black Star. Most down. Royce the five black nine. star. <laughs> yep. present. Yeah, I should have known yes. that one. Uh, yes. I should have got that. Yeah, that's probably why we said it all I sound know, I, and, and I'm ashamed because I have that CD. <laughs> oh man. That was a good mm. choice though, Sherry. Which, I mean I'm saying it so, and I'm reading it off of a screen, so you know that's yeah. I rather <laughs> so yeah. When, when when you heard that, when you heard that first, like what's going on with that song with you? So for me, um, I mean the chorus in itself. I started thinking, then I think into the paper, like I was ink, I was writing, I was trapped in between the lines. I escaped when I finished the rhyme, and then it. You know, it, it goes through that, and then it talks about how he did that actual like born date and everything. Um, and how really, you know, goes into how he was really getting into, you know, not even into hip, like just everything that made him. But the um, the song the song title is called Love, and, and Yasin Bay will forever be, you know, ever since I've seen him in Cosby Mysteries, um, he will forever be like my top two as far as five MCs. So mm -hmm. when I seen that, um, and where where I'm at with in my life right now. I'm not working at a customer service job. I'm not going to a job yeah. that I hate. I'm not, I've been there. And so this is literally just me falling back into love with hip hop. Again, it's never left me. 
and accepting self at the same time because I really feel like Understand. honestly like hip hop taught me a lot about accepting self and, and that's where I'm at with this. The other one was Stakes is High from uh what do you call it? Uh De La Soul. That, is, uh, that was my theme that was my theme my song in ninety six. Stakes is high Stakes is high was my theme yeah, song in ninety six. I wouldn't have left you without the dope rhyme to step to. I, I just had to go, you know, I went with the most deaf on run strength. So anyway. All right. Which, who's, who's actually next? that that kinda that kind of uh raises me a question, yo fellas. Um uh what 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 uh, I wanna say what line hits you, you the most? Up. Yeah. What line hits you? What line resonates even still today, yo? I mean, do we off the top of the head, can you like Oh yeah, like I live my life because I know there were certain points in my life where, like certain certain lyrics was like, damn, that's me, man. Like, did, like he's speaking to me. Um, like who has that? Like who has that right now? Like that's even to this day still does something to them. Oh yeah, well, Illmatic was, like yeah. <laughs> Il was like my vibe. was like everything sliding. All right, so Illmatic <laughs> definitely Illmatic. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. I that's gonna that's, say that's not. okay with me. Nothing, when he said it, it all. I heard it all. Hold on, one at a time, fellas. One at a time. We can't. I know. Remember. I was like, Stakes is high. When he said the line, neighborhoods are now hoods because nobody's neighbors, only animals living off animal yes. behavior. Yes. Like, yes. I knew that was shit. I, that I knew was, was it. Really well with that. That's really what we have right now with everything in consciousness. I hate to use the word consciousness, but yeah, yes, 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 all day. Yo, I think you know what I think. I think that's what it's about. Um, I'm definitely a huge Nas head. Actually, my one of my choices was it. Um, Freedom of Jail clips asserted the baby's being born. Same time my man is murdered. The beginning and end. Like, come on, man. Like that's oh, always gonna be iconic to me. Like no matter what. Like, hey. <laughs> like no matter what. Like that's that's always that resonates to me even now today. The whole. I, obviously, we all know who it is. It's Nas. It's like um, that yeah. whole, but that whole album, man. Like and like I said, we we know who it is. But some of the people who are watching, like I know a lot of these young kids are like, "Who's Nas?" And they're like, "Yo, like, oh nah, Nas ain't the greatest." Um, they and they're like, "Uh, little something is the greatest." And I'm like, "What?" Or they're like, "Who's Rakim? Like he done nothing for the culture." And I'm like, "What?" So I just think like there's a generational gap, like somewhere along the lines where like. We stopped promoting, I guess, our 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 music and our sound. I don't know. Take it away. Who's next? Who's next? Well, I don't really recite a whole lot of lyrics, you know, and stuff. So, you know, I, I'm more bust, you know, more on my own stuff. You know, I like, like a lot of these guys that we're, we're speaking about, but I don't really recite that many rhymes. Absolutely. And but, that's uh, fine for me. But I but I'll go ahead and uh, and bust a little something of my own um, that I got. So um, I'm gonna kick it off like this: A law I submit, use my body as an instrument on a speaking cipher disc to transmit like walkie talkies from the underground with the Anunnaki. Spit my brain is a wave of technology. With material of the raw, hot as the sun of almond raw, built to raise the spirit of a pyramid. You stand at the description of metaphysics of the mind, body, and spirit, a system of hieroglyphics, new patterns that you can't even imagine, like the Bible translated from Hebrew, Greek, and Latin to now what's distorted and you're not understanding. I am many members of one, the body of Christ standing, example to be using, not just when you're taking communion, one union, light reflector. I am the Mecca, black as core, and glow like avatars. I'm a neon display throughout the eons of BC and AG genetics from the first man out the dirt of the motherland. Hey! Wow, Wow. Wow, that was something. So, yo, that, that's... So, I was listening to it, and there's, there, yo, there's a certain lot, like level of intelligence that I don't even think people can, like, grasp. Like, the, you so, talk about so, Anunnaki, yeah. you were talking about, you had all Egyptian references, like, like I don't even right. know. I don't even know if certain people could keep up to that, let alone have the mental like capability to even break down these lyrics. Um, yeah, I mean, it's knowledge, man. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. That was that was something else, my brother. That was oh, matter of fact. Can I get something similar from somebody else? Hmm. Somebody. I know. I, I mean, we all we all artists here. 
That was um, I'm gonna have to, I'm, I'm, you know what I, I would pick if I had to pick a group or somebody that's similar on that level of consciousness, I would say X Clan. And that's okay. that's going like back in the day. Wow. Yeah. Right, right. I'm not gonna lie to you. I actually was gonna consider X Clan because you know, you see the face. You see the mm -hmm. entitlement, whatever. You don't. Nobody expects this from me, but this is literally who I am. So I really thought I had to come with it. So that's definitely. Mm -hmm. I miss the con. Like I hate using the word consciousness. Please, like there's a better word. But I miss that intelligence. I miss the I'm seeing, and I definitely miss, for lack of a better term, the consciousness and X Clan. You know, arrest development. Like where did all of that go? Goody Mob. I was gonna come with some Goody Mob, honestly. So oh, oh, again, right, much respect. Geez. This is How about for our teachers? Oh, PRT all day. Um, L O S leaders of the new school for sure. Uh, yeah. I literally dig in some oh. crates, so you know, don't get this mouth started. But Pen Wu put oh, yeah. the camera down. I don't know where Pen Wu went. He's been quiet for a minute, so we're gonna call mm. him back to the set whenever he <laughs> ready. Then you do know. what you got to do. And there's one more I could throw in there. I gotta go with the intelligent hoodlum, who was also tragedy, tragedy Gaddafi. Um, you got to go with definitely uh, right. intelligent hoodlum tragedy Gaddafi. Yep, yep. And it's, that down. I yo, I wrote it down myself because, like I said, I'm a student too. You know what I mean? So, like, like all right. So in '96, I was seven. So, like, like I said, there's certain parts of hip hop that's new to me. Like, you understand? But I'm not. I I I can't. I'm not. I'm never the one to say that I'm the best at something. And I'm always, like I said, I'm a student. So. I got I'm I'm whole pages of stuff that, like you know, I do my homework too. This is for me as well. So, like I said, right. man, like like I said, if anybody got their own lyrics to even drop on, that's cool too. Like whatever whatever speaks to you. Sometimes we speak to ourselves, and this is why this is our art form. You understand? Like this is why, like this is how we express ourselves. And sometimes nobody could do it better than us. So, like I said, hey, I, said I, got, I got one for everybody. Absolutely, brother. Okay. Go ahead, this song right here sent me to the library in 1998. Yep. And I'm going to share this with you. It said, I be the Jesus to your Buddha, the christening at your Juma, the big kahuna, Jehovah Witness, and Sway Pumas, Zeus, Pharaoh, Elohim, Saturn, Yah, Jah, Rastafari, and Allah, the Most High. I been only thing I'm not. I'm the ocean, bumblebee, and a glot. Earthquakes is how much you can take. The reason behind every mistake mankind continually make. Mm. Right, wow. all right. Mm. Yo, that's don't some fire. Don't that's some fire. This, this song, this song sent me to the library in 1998, man, and it's a and, and it's a West Coast artist. Whew. Wow, don't, for real. Don't leave me in suspense, man. Who? Yo, what? Yo, I'm. Anybody could guess that? MC8? Nah. Hell no. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, with that by any chance, um, Egyptian mist? No, I'm going to say a little bit more and see if you can get it. Um, I, I did, uh, did God create man or did man create God? The answer is both because how mortals look at God is odd. You customize to be comfortable for what you want to do of how you choose to act. The Pope would say to tell you that God ain't black, but to get something out of nothing is physically impossible. That's a fact. Who? Who is this? Who? Raz Raz. Interview with a Whoa! vampire. Raz Raz. No, hold on. it isn't. Hold on. No. Right now. Hold on. Oh, my oh, my God. God. I had him on the wall. Did you know Raskaz came and actually stayed across from me like about two years ago at the house I stayed in, and he stayed in the Airbnb. So that's wild, man. It's a small world. Like I can't believe that's Raskaz. What's the name of that song? Raskaz is you with a vampire. Oh my god, wow. I'm, I'm definitely not be sauce squad, bro. Can't be Raskaz got so much music. Hey, that's been my guy for a long time, man. I met Raz back in like '97, man. That's been my guy for a long time. Yeah, because he came Dream. out with Solo on Ice. What was in '96? I was 16. Yeah, when that was the game yeah. with that one, man. Wow. Yeah. I said, I didn't even. This is new to me, and that wow, that was amazing. I think we lost. Uh, I think we lost the member over here. I think he got a little frozen. 
I can't see everybody, but I can hear y'all. Oh, yeah. okay. Yo, Pin, you heard that, brother? Yeah, I heard that. That was pretty amazing, man. That shit was pretty amazing. Oh, um, yeah. damn. Like, I had oh, in mind, was... like, uh, Sadat X or, like, um, you know, Sauce Walker. Not a lot of people know Sauce Walker from I don't. over there. I... West Coast. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, who I, I personally well. don't. Like I said, I, I was born. In, I don't really know much about West Coast music, but like I said, if you give me like three or four real quick, I could look up to and let you know, me get familiarized myself with it. Was a beast. Street dude. I think he's like a crip or a blood or some shit like that. Got you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Definitely. Um, Sherry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Still away, man. He's a hard hitter. You breaking up? I said he this little Wayne, and he's a hard hitter. You know, everybody love little Wayne. I don't like the nigga personally, but um. <laughs> 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 hold on, we gotta get. Hold on, let's oh, get back on that. Not slayed oh, on big street. Sorry, Pin Wu. I don't to be honest. I, to be honest, I don't. I don't be, be honest. I don't. I don't listen to Lil Wayne. I never bought his music. To be honest, um, you know, I never. I never bought it. So I'm gonna say I'm definitely not a Lil Wayne fan. And and if if I had to really really say anything, I think it was really him and Birdman that destroyed hip hop from the beginning. You know, with all that bling shit. You know, with so really, really, I think Lil Wayne and Birdman is the one that fucked hip hop up from the beginning. Oh, don't hold on! Don't leave it at that. Don't leave it at that. Come on. How do you feel? I'll right, say, I'll say, wait, hold on, hold on. I'll say this: If you notice, the East Coast in the beginning, the beginning had the market for the longest time. Once the market was given to the West back in like ninety five, ninety six, when Tupac was responsible for taking the market. After the West lost the market in hip hop, it went to the South. When it went to the South, we had 10 years of trash rap come out. I'm yeah. not going to lie to you. That's when I fell in depression. I was like, oh, my God, what's happening? Yeah. How about the last 20? So Hip-hop been really whack. Hip -hop really been whack the last 20 years. Let's go. Let's say 20 years now. Because mm -hmm. if you don't really fuck with the underground or say you don't know the older hip-hop classics, from like the 90s or the 80s, then then you lost. You know, if you're just a mainstream head and you only listen to mainstream artists, you don't really know hip hop if you just listen to mainstream artists. Really, you know, because because you're not you're not expanding your mind, you know, opening up for other artists to to, to listen to. Because the problem with hip hop nowadays, people so caught up on who they know in hip hop or who they've heard of or yep, or, or yep. who who are they associated with that's famous that that fuck with if they never heard of those people they don't even want to check it out without them really giving a real chance you know to that artist which could be dope right right, right. that's true that's true i definitely understand it. but i'm interested to find out now that you say it i'm interested to find out like why you think that that was the early stages of the the decline of hip-hop you know because like i said in in early 2000 i was maybe 11 so like if you could see it then, then speak on it. You know what I mean. So, <laughs> you know, you know, late ninety nine, late ninety nine. That's when we lost Big Pun and Big L, which were, mm. you know, pretty much the last of of that of that real era coming out around that time. And then you know, all this bling shit came in, and 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 it, it just it just fucked up the game. It went from bling shit to niggas making up a dance song every track, and then from that it went on to this auto tune shit. And then it went, it went on, was on that chop and screw shit for a little while. And then everybody went to this mumble rap shit. So it, it, it's changed, but the music still hasn't went back to the, the original essence that it's supposed to be. That's right. Yeah, that shit sounds like, like, can, can I, can I say one more? Unless you do the type of music that we do. Unless you, you know, unless you, like I said, you seriously fuck with hip hop and the underground and stuff. You know, you're not concerned on how many records they sold. You know, they could have sold one copy if the album's, you know, dope. I'm a bump to shit. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> you know, when, 
and when you know they used to have tapes and, and and records and you know Sam Goodies and stuff. I used to pull artists off the shelf that I never even heard of and take mm-hmm. take the tape. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know yeah. Um, that's what you yeah. call a disc jockey. Mm-hmm. That's a exactly. that's a fact. <laughs> that's exactly. a fact. Can I get somebody else's opinion? Well, I would say this: two thousand. That's probably around the time that. That had it, it was hard for me to even write music because of the 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 way that hip hop went based on the South taking the market, cash money being a part of that, and it was a bunch of lyrics that had nothing to do with inspiring. So if it's not inspiring, then we didn't have the good music. It was about materialistic and basically the uh, lust, envy, hate, greed. So I, I agree. It, after that, we went through ten years. A straight tour mall to where we heard a bunch of bullshit. The game was so saturated with bullshit that they weren't even giving out album deals no more. They were That's giving right. out single deals. And and that just really destroyed the whole culture as far as hip hop and where corporate where corporate America decided they wanted to push back in the like early 2000s. That's crazy because I That's just crazy. had this discussion with Sherry earlier. That. Yeah, yeah, yo, I swear to God, yo, we are all on the same page because I was like, because I wanted to bring up hip hop news and I was I wanted to talk about the 360 deals and 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 stuff like that because people are aware of them, but I don't think they really know what they are. Like they hear about them, but they don't understand like the good and the bad to it, the sweet and the sour. Um, and it's crazy that you said that how it kind of all ties in from mainstream too, and it kind of trickles down to the to the underground, yo. Um I don't want to keep. I don't want to hold up the line. So if somebody else want to speak on that too, I'm I'm all ears. Well, well, I'm gonna say this. I think hip hop. You people got to remember it starts from the underground because you know they didn't even play hip hop on the radio yep. back in the day. You know, yep. Run DMC was the first group. Was really cool. Yeah, so it was we meant to be underground. underground. It wasn't really meant to be commercial like like how it is now. You know, I remember when a lot of kids, you know, a lot of people were scared of hip hop, you know, yeah. back in the day. You know, I can even bring it out to the Lynch Mob records when the Lynch Mob was making Please. records with Lynch the Gorillas in the Mist. People were scared of hip hop yeah. back in the time. <laughs> All right. Okay. The Lala's the Strong. West Coast shit. Is that um, Fear of the Black Planet? Uh, Public Enemy, right? Public Enemy. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. You know. You know, um, so it wasn't much as a mainstream, you know, mainstream audience at that time, you know, and some tapes I even had to hide from my mama. I had to hide some of those two short tapes back in the day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> can I say something, please? Can I just can I just say something? Talk about I grew up in Orlando on on like it was like little New York, like little little boom Baptist, right? So mm. when I first went and actually got a tape, tell me it wasn't N.W.A. And I played it on my radio, thinking, okay, you know, whatever, on my little, you know, boom box or whatever. Crux said peace, by the way. Crux Matolo in the building, Comrade uh, Camp. Uh, Sorry, I had to say it um, through IG. And so with that being said, I, you know what I did? That's where it started for me. Like, I actually took that cassette. I dubbed it. I put it back in the plastic. I took it back to the record store at Camelot Records in Orlando. <laughs> and I kept doing that. Every time there was a tape come out. I put it back in there like it never left. <laughs> took it back to the store. Got me another one. So they was my name. And it's 36 chains. Sorry. You know. But it's part of the NWA. But, but now, now that you mentioned NWA, really to tell you the truth, hip hop is cussing because of NWA. Because I remember back in the day when the East Coast records used to bleep out the words with the with, with the curse and they, they didn't oh cuss. The West yeah. Coast came with Ice-T and NWA. That's when the profanity really, really started. So really, yeah. you know, with the parental discretionary advised and all those stickers is really because, you know, those artists, you know, they, they mm-hmm. didn't give a fuck what people thought back in the day. They said what they needed, what they needed to say. And that's hip hop. When you don't give yeah. a fuck yeah. and you tell the truth on record and you say <laughs> what you want to say, that's hip hop. That's I mean, expression. I, yeah, I don't know. Like me. I, I I may be wrong about this, but I feel like they needed to say that. Like they they had no other choice but to say that. Cause I feel like a lot of a lot of things, like a lot of things that happen to us, like as a people or as anything, needs to be like set into song. It needs to be expressed. Mm. And I feel like had they not done that, like they 
like every like they changed the game. Like we all know that. Can you imagine if they decided to stifle themselves? How mm-hmm. how how what the sound would be like now? So mm-hmm. you know what I'm gonna say this. When I was younger, it was, and I'm I'm really about to tell my age here. And, and shout out to D Barnes. I just seen her about two months ago. Oh Pump no, you did it. Pump it up. <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> but wait a minute, hold on. Are Pump you it up. That show? You can literally, you can literally walk away from Pump It Up from raw hip hop and get and, and gang of education. Yeah, from you could. from West Coast rap all the way to East Coast rap, and you got you got some type of conscious education from listening to music back then. Exactly. Uh, yep. So I mean, I, I, I think that's why, and it's funny that we say that because I think that's um. That's kind of like a unstole, a untold thing, like right now, because they're like they're purposely dumbing down hip hop and they're dumbing down the art culture to keep. Um, I want to say the minority of people, or excuse me, us minorities, uh, to keep them kind of like from excelling. I don't know how do you, how do you guys feel about that? Like, like, do you think there's any truth to that? Like, do you think yeah, yeah. Yeah. than school than language arts? I learned more from a dictionary, a college dictionary, and music than I did language arts. And I got straight A's in language arts. Now, I did fail Spanish, though. Don't ask me how, because I'm Hispanic. Me you know? too. <laughs> <laughs> the, the hey, me, it was just like, yeah. all right, fuck you, motherfucker. Don't try to teach me what I already know. OK, OK. Anybody <laughs> else? Yeah, thank you. He wild. Lord. I'll say this. It became watered down. And this is how you know it became watered down, because when corporate America starts seeing hip hop on the rise. They wanted to control what was That's publicized correct. and what what. It's the same way how KRS One can lose a battle against Nelly because corporate pushed the bullshit they wanted to push versus raw hip hop. That is correct. That's a Fendi, y'all. I definitely understand that. Definitely understand that. Yeah, um, he got so a point. Point. Reason being because we were actually more conscious of who we were as a people when there was raw hip hop. When your artists back then made two hundred dollars a show, you had a big rope chain, but you made two hundred dollars a show until they seem right. like, wait a minute, we can commercialize this stuff and we can put, we can, we can control it by putting what we want to feed to the masses and not allow the minds to be woken or conscious of the music that they're putting out. So people like us, Killer Bees, all 300 and about 60 of us that's floating around the United States wow. are considered underground uh, artists. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. about 300 yeah, and what is, That's what right. I mean. Seven. Mm-hmm. Seven. Tell yeah. them what hip-hop means. Go ahead. You do that. Nah, yeah, definitely, brother. Come it's on, why don't you tell us about that? It's real talk. It's what you live in, man. It's what you live in, man. It's real talk. That's right. You get a better, you damn near get a better education to listen to certain hip hop than you would actually going to school or or what you would actually uh something that your parents didn't teach you. I yeah, feel that's like, right. Can I yeah, just I, say I, something to that, please? Absolutely. <laughs> I just want to say something to that, like real quick. Um honestly, too, I just have to say, like, my thing ever since I really fell in love with hip hop when I was you know, five, it was a breakdancing contest back in like a little small town that my dad happened to take me to in the eighties and uh, boom bap had me from that. And then wild styles and fat boys and all that. But the thing that stuck with me, especially, and I'm just going to say it, I'm really excited to just be my own self, my own skin is my entitled, you know, self, my entitled skin or what have you. I always took it very seriously to respect the architects of our culture because without them and without the, the people that actually, you know, uh, being Black History Month, even without the people that built this country, that built the society, is bigger than hip hop, like Dead Press said. So it's always been really important to me to not only give back, but to do the knowledge, as they say, and to respect the architects of the culture. So for me to be sitting here, you know, having this conversation with you guys, being in my truest self and respecting the culture in itself, like I learned so much that I couldn't have learned in the history class, right? Keith Murray. Uh, you know, um, you dead know. prez, like we were talking about, goody mob, uh, oh. southern calistics, play a lot, you know, all that. Like, 
it all had, you know, even even we common for Pete's sake. There's all knowledge in every little bit of it. And okay. I just was so thankful that I was able to eat it up. And I'm really just, you know, thankful to be able to give that back. So with that being said, I, I really missed that part of hip hop is the knowledge. And for you guys to really just be pushing that, obviously I get kind of a clump. So <laughs> I really, really miss that in hip hop. Just the knowledge born, honestly, is, is really a key thing. And I really would love to see that come back, you know. Um, That's right. That being said, that's that's just my little my heartbeat. I'm I'm gonna go fan myself. Y'all go do what you gotta do. I'm gonna be over here. Right. Church. <laughs> Church. 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 So, um, I think I think I think uh, I think that's the case because um, because um, so hip hop it was a, it was about a story. It was about it was about getting to a point. It's about expressing yourself. So, I feel like that's kind of gone now. Um, so all right, so. We're able to learn through experiences. So when we hear somebody else's experience, we're able to cut somehow adapt it to our lives or or utilize yeah. that in some way. So I feel like once they took that kind of aspect out, and now, like I said, I, I don't want to talk about where the hip hop is now, but like I said, I feel like once once that was taken out, like there was nowhere to put that in. I don't know. Um, I don't know if I'm saying it the right way. I mean, I'm gonna let somebody else take it out. I got a couple questions. You, y'all are rappers, right? Mm -hmm. I am not. Oh, okay. Well, you look like one. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that was stereotyping. Uh, you know, do do y'all have ADHD? I do, do actually. I do. I, I do too. And I, I, I just want to know for some. I, I, you know what? I'm I'm gonna tell you something. My ADHD is probably why my verses come out all over the place. Mm. If you ever listen, to my, like, how do you get ADHD? See your life. See your life. Right, right. Yeah, if you yeah. ever listen to my verse, my verse will be all over the place, but I always kind of boomerang it back on. Um, and that shit starts. <laughs> I got a question. What's the, what's the ADHD reference? What's the what? Uh, What's the ADHD reference? It's more attention I got, I got disorder, but you're hyper. You know what I'm saying? Like me, I can't sit still. I cannot sit still. Yeah. That's why we're and I, vibrate. I always get beats in my head, whether I'm at work, I could be at, in court, in the courtroom. I hear beats in my head all the motherfucking time, just random yep. motherfucking beats. Yep. But it's a gift and a curse. tell you, so... I don't know if Pimble anybody else. I don't know if anybody else, but if you ever go to one of my songs called Warning Signs that new chapter did, it really sound like I was going all over the place. And that's based on because I do have attention deficit disorder, but it actually works out for me because I always have something to talk about. Unbelievably happy right now. I literally have I call it my ADHD tattoo. That I, it's only when I have it got put on backwards, so I feel like it got like messed up and just lost its attention and went away. But um, I just really want to say, in regards to like hip hop and even mental health right now, I think that's a great thing where we're at. Chance the rapper, uh, Kendrick Lamar, of course, did I think serial, serial, and then uh, Joiner Lucas, one of my favorite tracks. Joiner oh, Lucas, Luke. great artist, ADHD. Um, oh, but yeah. I think that's what makes us unique I'm and creative. A, and that's why we that. changed the world. You know what I'm saying? But see, yeah. this is the thing, too, what I learned. I never downplayed what I had. It's just it's just the fact to say I learned different. So right. it's not that their method of education was or the way they teach was, was right. I just learned different. I had to cope with how I just learned different or how I express my art through through what how I express it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I got so a let question. me ask you Most guys. Uh, I I had a question for you guys. Why do you think in the state of hip hop now that they try to divide hip hop and rap into two different categories when, when Cold, technically they, they technically they came in together? Because if if you if you define the meaning of rap music, rap stands for rhythm and poetry, and people wow. seem to forget. That's the, that's the meaning of rap. And hip hop is the overall culture itself with the rest of those elements. So why are people trying to divide hip hop and rap? And some, I hear some people say, well, 
you know, I'm an MC, I'm not a rapper, but at the end of the day, you are still rapping no matter how you look at it. Whether you call yourself an MC or whatever, you are still rapping. So I never knew that that was rhythm and poetry. Yeah. Never. That's crazy. Well, you heard of, you heard of R&B, right? Rhythm, you heard of R&B, rhythm and blues, right? Rhythm and blues. It's the same rhythm thing and rap, blues. rhythm and poetry. Yeah. Wow, I never oh, really I heard it, it down like that. It was like I a mean, battle rapper, like strikes. Like yeah, blows, so like, so why why are people dividing hip hop, hip hop and rap when when it shouldn't really be? I think really with the mainstream and and a lot of these people that can't rap are being called rappers, you know, and, and people are just getting the whole shit fucked up. Because remember, Rakim back in the day called himself a rapper. LL Cool J called himself a rapper back then, and they were wow. also considered MCs as well. Well, say this. I would say this. For nowadays, it's you got so much people rapping over bullshit, or you got so much bullshit like how it's it's pissing me off how we look at a hip hop award show, but you got this so called I rap, but you singing love ballads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yes. I I can do that. There's nobody. They're not (laughs) rapping anymore. They're you really singing and calling it rap. So there had to be a distinction to be like, well, look, I'm this, I'm that. So yeah. hip hop was was like the brand to really say that I'm with the old culture and rap was like introduced as what you call this new bullshit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, I think there's I think the difference is that um one is lyric lyrically um pushed and the other one you kind of feel more and you 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 kind of like there you I, I think there's a difference where one you listen to and you understand it and you feel it, and the other one is just music and sound, and you, you gotta kind of catch a vibe off of that. I'm not sure, but I do, I do, I, I do right. agree with, with, with the big homie when he said, Yo, they are one in the same, and they should not have they should not have taken that out from each other. I definitely agree. Yeah. I definitely agree to that. I actually can say I really needed to hear that because there were so many myths and, you know, things throughout the 90s and hip hop. Like, you know, one of the things like Timberland was racist or, or whatever, but we did have that division and it became very like she, she or, or, you know, like if you were and I still to this day. So I'm really glad OT broke it down like that in yeah. in in that sense because I divide rappers with MCs like MCs yeah. have skill. Mm-hmm. And 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 that's that really that division is not right. And I'm really glad that you actually, you know, you literally talk about hip hop homework. I know, the, you know, I know the knowledge. And like, I really am glad to actually hear that because that that's something that um, I think is really something to address. So, yeah, I'm looking up lyrics right now. Sorry. Absolutely, absolutely. Actually, um, I just thought about something. Not to go, not to keep backtracking through um things, but I know the homie said that. He asked us if we had ADHD, and we kind of all uh, agreed that it's kind of like a gift and a curse and at times. Um, and I feel like I feel like mainstream understands that, and they prey on that because a lot of a lot of people who are creative with with music and talent they aren't savvy with business. And I feel like you have to be you have to have I kind of like a mind for both. And I feel like the industry is taking advantage of the people who don't have the time to look at the contract and really, really understand the business part because they're creative people and they're they're into their music, they're into their sound, they're into their brand. So they're trusting in a, in a, in a sense that they be taken care of and they're getting fucked every chance they get. So like I said, I don't mean to backtrack, yo. We can move forward with the conversation. Yeah, that's actually um, good that you bring that what up. You, what, wait, what do you guys uh, think? Like, maybe I might be wrong. What do you think? No, you're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Oh, I, I'm glad. I think I'm so. Glad. But I think more so where the division came from is when you have the wackest dude claiming to be a rapper and mm-hmm. the dopest dude to be a rapper. It's mm-hmm. like, well, where's the distinction come in? Because I'm not him. He's wack as fuck. I'm mm-hmm. dope as fuck. So <laughs> where, no, I'm, I'm serious. This is where the mm-hmm. distinction came in. Like, I want to say mid 90s, early 90s. Where that part your little one versus your inspected dad, but both right. of them say they rappers, one of them is whack as fuck, and the other one is dope as fuck. So <laughs> right. then we have that one that said, Well, I'm an MC, 
what that man is doing is called rapping or or or, or what matter of fact the RZA referred to it as R and B singers because they was rapping over bullshit and singing with it. <laughs> 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 right. That whole division yeah. in the nineties right. about rapping bullshit. Yeah. That was definitely and, and I gotta add something to that because when it comes to you know um, us considering what, what we are, I just don't say I'm an MC. I just don't say I'm a rapper. I say I'm an MC, a rapper, a lyricist. I'm a poet. I'm all those. I don't like to put myself in in, in one category because I'm very versatile. So I do it all. So you know, I just don't want to be considered a rapper or a MC. I'm I'm all those. So I'm pretty much the total package. Is, is the way I like to. To you know, consider myself total pack. Absolutely. And you know I what? And I, I I swear to you, in 2020, I just tell anybody put their money where their mouth is. We can battle to see who the baddest. That's just where I'm at. Wait, <laughs> but but here's the thing. I don't think anybody's the best. You know why? Because you, it's a lot of dope rappers out there, and, and a lot of people claim the best, which they're probably good. But it's always going to be another rapper that's going to come and shred you. No matter what, I, I won battles and I lost battles. So straight up, I kind of got what, 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 sense. What, 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 oh, we got, one, we got one coming through. We got one coming through. <laughs> you, you, know? got, you got, but you got one. You, you got that was back in in culture where we battle these mm -hmm. with these new dudes. I didn't call out a bunch of these new dudes and be like, "Look, if you feel that you dope, put your money where your mouth is, and and we can just get on the mic and see who's the baddest." And then they and say, they, I'm not a rapper. And they yeah. hide behind they that. Because they're like, I'm not a son. rapper. Yeah, yeah. We're like, oh, well, you know, I'm not. Well, shut up then. Stop talking. Stop making up, music bro. in my no, genre. Like, right. And there's nothing but na nasty mouth. You know. Yeah. It's, right. it's me. Yeah. Matter of fact, brother, speak on that. What you mean by nasty mouth? Um, Like, you know, it, it's just, there's no holding back. It is what it is you know whatever you see is what you explaining you know what i'm saying if if um uh excuse there's a lady in the room but like it's like if i'm fucking this bitch doggy style i'm gonna tell you how that vagina look if it's hanging the clit is hanging <laughs> or it's tight, you know what i'm saying i'm gonna explain and he went a little he went a little odb with that one i like it i like it a lot <laughs> <laughs> Man, you gotta love him. <laughs> oh, I love him. Oh, I love him. I love that. <laughs> oh, I, I'm gonna set up some Akinelli, so don't even try me. I'm just saying. I like that. I like that. Say what's on his mind always, though. Always. Yeah. I, I'm not right. commercial. I, that's why I'm not commercial. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I'm the first show. So, um,. Uh, Sher Sherry, I don't know if you want to stop it now. Um, I got my recording at an hour. Okay. I have a little lyric that I'd like to add to our conversation because I feel like it's very fitting Absolutely. for many reasons. Nope. Let's Absolutely. figure out if we can at least dissect this one, shall we? Um, I'm sorry. I, I, I will start trying to freestyle when nobody's watching. Um, Light is provided through the sparks of energy from the mind that travels in rhyme form, giving sight to the dumb, the deaf, the dumb are mostly intrigued by the drum. Death only had only can save shell from the relentless attack of the track spares none. What is that? That's the killer who tag triumphs. <laughs> and I think it really speaks to our conversation and our dialogue and our dissection of this particular maiden episode of Hip Hop Homework. And I really right. feel like we brought it back, we brought it forward, you know, as far as the architects, we're talking about where it is. I really feel like, you know, I'm gonna get a young person in the building, his name's Garvey G, I'm just saying, he's part through Comrade Camp and he's a young person, so he's got a really logical and intelligent perspective, but like, I would really like to open that up because a lot of people, you know, whoever's going to watch a show, if they're young people, they're going to be like, I don't know. I had this one talk about Wu-Tang. OK, I had this 27 year old come over, literally trying to like model photography, whatever. I'm trying to get it together. And I had Method Man on in, in the TV on the 52 inch. And he's like, you listen to this? And I was like, yeah, I listened to this. And he's like, that's trash. I literally almost I almost I almost I almost jumped out my seat. How did you I not kill that man? In my apartment, because I'm like, 
how in the world, you know, he listens to some like trap, whatever I can get, you know, it's, it's all part of the culture. Like there is divisions. And I really feel like it's important to break those things down, but you know, at least we're talking about where we're going, where we were, where we're going. And I really appreciate the dialogue and, and the conversation, but I, I really, to bring it back because I'm tangential and ADHD circumferential, like black seven, he'd bring it back. Right. Um, mm. I think that lyric in particular has always spoke to me from the moment I heard it, especially because people, you know, you're mostly intrigued by the drum. Like you don't really listen to the lyrics and, and, and the intelligence that's put in front of you unless you're wise enough, you know, to pick up on the knowledge. So I exactly. thought that was real poignant. That's I'm going to add something on to that, because if you're not talking about simple stuff that some a lot of people's mind can't comprehend, they're not trying to hear that because they can't comprehend what it. They just right. want to hear simple, simple shit like cat and hat and, you know, rolling on 24s and just simple shit. Talking yeah, about bitches and blunt. You're not holding those people accountable shit. anymore, neither. We're not making them do this. This like, like the homie said, he went to the library. He held himself accountable because he refused to be the dumb dude in the room. So, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. at what point do we do we stop dumbing ourselves down? Because this dude don't know who the Anaki was or what Elohim means or whatever the case may be. Like, what, what, yeah. why, do, why, do, why do certain people have to dumb down their sound because mm. of that? So, I mean, that's just, like I said, I, I understand and I respect that. I'm just, I'm just getting that point across, you know? Yeah. So, like, no. And, yo, well, they, they, well, they, they, they claim, um, you know, that hip hop's a young man's game, but I don't agree with that, Ooh. you know? You know, I've been, I've been, I'm, I'm 40 years old. I've been, I've been doing hip hop for over 20 years. I'm definitely the culture. I love it. Young kids comprehend what I'm saying. Older cats comprehend. And really, if it wasn't for the older cats, it would be no hip hop because old people are the ones that made up rap anyway. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're in the golden I mean, age of hip hop right now. I, mean, I think I remember talking about old school, like, you know, uh, Art Rakim and, um, oh my God, why can't I think of his name? Slick Rick, you know, that was yeah. old school to right. us. Now we're in the gold age of hip hop. And somebody had to break this down. I had to touch on this because I did write that down. So I'm really glad that you brought that up. And we're, we're ciphering right now. This makes me so happy. I'm sorry. I'm getting girly. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, uh, yeah, like the age. Wu-Tang was about our age-ish when we were younger. So somebody had to break this down. And I was like, I'm too old to be in hip hop. I'm too yeah. old to DJ. I'm too old to be I mean, whatever. I no, mean, how, old, not, how old do now people we're think? How old do people get back to the young people? You know what I'm saying? I mean, how old do people really think Eminem is? He's 46 fucking years old. I mean, I Ice Cube is yeah. almost something. Snoop Dogg is, is old. So even the young cats that listen to those artists, they better look up what age they are, you know, before they start judging that hip hop's a young man's game or not. Respect. I had a young, young, uh, not young MC, but a thirty-five-year-old dude that I was talking. He was he was fire on SoundCloud because I'm still digging in the crates, whatever. <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, I think it's gonna have to be a hobby because I'm getting too old." And I was like, "We're in an age now where age doesn't matter. We're digitally formatted. It's the talent, it's so not the age. age is it's not the factor. talent. Like, it's the age. not it's at all. Talent. Not it's at the all. sound. Yep." Yeah, I saw at level the on Brothers uh, is, is still going on stage at their age. The Ozzy Brothers doing shows and doing tours. Exactly. So if they still out there doing it, you know, right. who, who's to say it's for young people? That music is only yeah. for young people. And but, I mean, I mean, you know, I know what? I, I, and I say this: we got a whole generation. You got like the early millennials and and part of generation, or all of Generation X, that's not being catered to musically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's important. Y'all are important. The work that you do and the energy that you do and the energy that is given is important. So exactly like that part. Absolutely. But I'm going to, I'm going to touch on that real fast. Um, and I'm going to say, I'm going to say hip hop is the only genre where the younger cats, they don't respect their alum. They don't they don't respect their OGs. They don't respect the people who came into the game. Especially with songs like, you know, like like Fuck J. Cole or you know, shit, a little petty stuff like this. Like I feel like hip hop is the only genre that doesn't stick together. Like if you go to country, you got the old school country dudes with the new school dudes and they're making songs and they they're kind of teaching them in a way. 
Same thing with rock and roll, even though that's kind of like where where it's at right now. Because like I said, I, I kind of jump genres, but I, I say that because like it's important. It's important to to understand that and to do music with the younger too. Like so, that's another thing I'm not seeing a lot of. I'm not seeing a lot of old school dudes who are lyricists who they kind of like all retired and kind of like not faded out, but didn't care about where they left hip hop or where it's at now. Like. Cause I would like to see a, a you know like a real real MC lyricist on somebody new who could who has to elevate their game now that they're on it. Like wow, I got Rakim on the track. Uh, I I really gotta come with this shit now. Like I gotta bring it or I got this person or that person. I'm just using an example. I'm just saying. So I don't I don't know I don't know how y'all feel about that. Maybe we could touch down on that real fast. That's true. You know what I, I tell you this: the people that don't respect the past. They don't have much of a future. If you mm. notice that the individuals that respect the past, Kendrick Lamar's, your Drakes, you see they have long. Even J Cole, they have longevity. For right. people to take, and what, what what gets me is like when you had individuals who you basically took a thong, a, a, a thug bone, a, a bone thug and harmony style. Mm. You use their style and then you turn around and diss them in the same breath. It's like, well, you don't, you're not gonna have longevity because the music that that that's being put out now is a phase. So once that fad is out, you have no foundation to stand on, and they're gonna find themselves on the unemployment line talking about we were rap for food. <laughs> 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 I and, and, but, you, but I heard you you mentioned Bone style, but didn't Twista have that style before Bone? You know, Tongue Twister was out before Bone yeah. Thugs and Harmony Bone was. Bone, but, but see, Bone was more Harmony with it, and that's what you hear a lot now is more Harmony. Mm -hmm. okay. To the point, they sound saying. like they singing R&B songs talking about, they're talking about his rap. Right, also, right, So right. we're not talking about necessarily how fast, and okay, I understand, I understand what you're saying. It's even Dallas effects rap, rap fast. You know, if you want to talk about, you know, other people that spit it fast, you know, they, they came yeah, out with their own like little... Harmony. Buster, like... Well, it's, it's the harmony. The harmony yeah. is the it's key. Harmony is where it comes God from. Say, where, yeah, where Bone was relevant and these youngsters ain't paying homage to where it actually... What actually... Who really started it. Mm -hmm. That's Yo, right. Like seven. Even, you can even say... The Twister started the fast rap period, but pay homage. Those that pay homage, you they're a lot, they're around a lot longer. The ones that right. don't pay homage, again, they're gonna be on the side of the freeway holding the sign up saying we were rap for food. <laughs> Big old sign. Big old sign. The motherfucking melodies. The motherfucking melodies is right in front of us, man. You just gotta make contact with it. That's yeah. all it is, man. It's, it's, yeah. it's life. Music is life. It's like it the up-tempo, the down-tempo. It all is it's very important to our life, the music is. You know, so it's tempos bring up different shit. Like John Lennon. I don't know if y'all know John Lennon, the, the Beatles. Of course. Of course. Of course. 258 hertz and shit. Where it was a, a smooth melody. So... They killed that motherfucker because of that shit, I think, because, you know, they like, mm -hmm. it was a peaceful, positive energy movement for the whole, you know, United States and this and this and that. Wow. That's right. And, mm. and I just have to say real quick, that's also why I fell in love with hip hop, because it it, be, it it's become more of a universal language. But, you know, sampling from from uh jazz and blues and 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 really the roots of uh, and i'm not gonna i'm just gonna say like it's that, literally black music. if it wasn't for black music we wouldn't have most all of our popular music right now but hip-hop really was the thing that tied it all together the knowledge you know sampling different uh -huh. artists things that i never even heard of i i didn't i never i never said i was going to say this out loud i had the vanilla ice tape Okay, I said it, but. That's my dark secret. I swear to God. All right. You know what? When Vanilla Ice came out, he was kind of dope. I'm not going to lie to you. It took me to find out different. I was like, the weather, whatever. It was like, after the kids on the block, except damn Yankees moved on and hip hop is realness. 
anyway, so <laughs> my mom, I asked my mom, like, you know, I heard about the sample queen, you know, where did, where did that come from? And she told me about queen and that opened, opened a no whole nother realm, now you know, as far as music. Thing, so yeah. hip hop, yeah. hip hop has a, a way of being a, a language and it also has a way of healing yeah. because the medium that it's, it's, it's through is, is music and that can actually heal people. You know, yeah. so yeah, that just really pinball when he speaks, man. There's definitely some things that come out that's that's truth for real. Absolutely. <laughs> and um, yo, I hate to I hate to backtrack <laughs> and, and, and bring up old old topics, but uh, um, so we talk we were talking about the uniqueness uh the unique uh, yeah uniqueness of sound and and all that other cause, and she said that uh without the black culture. Uh, a lot of music wouldn't be around, and um, so I met when I when I met Supreme, we were talking about music and sound, and he was talking to me about uh, how they've been stealing the sound for years, for decades, and I didn't understand what that meant. And so he sat across from me, he was like, "Listen, these Elvis songs were robbed; yeah. they were stolen," and I couldn't yeah. believe it. But I, I I know better to to call Prima a liar because he he knows. The, this is what he knows. This is what he does. So when, like, when you hear stories of people coming into other people's booths with recording stuff just to hear their sound, like, that means something. You know what I mean? So I feel like, as far as expression, like, hip hop was always the sound was always there. The culture was always there. I just, I just think that the platform kind of wasn't. And I, I feel like in another way, like, it's kind of gone. Like, can we build on that? Like. Not to backtrack, but what do you guys think? Do you think I'm right? Do you think I have I might be onto something? Yeah, you, well, yeah, you, you got some you points have right there. Without a beginning. Facts. That's a big What fact. was that? I didn't really say. The, you can't, I just have to uh, say. You can't have you know a future without a beginning. But yeah, that's that's, that's the only right. Alpha the Omega. Um and, you know, the thing with hip hop, too, is it really started from nothing. It literally started from two turntables and a microphone. You know, DJ Herc and, 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 and the Bronx was burning, which, by the way, is a great documentary. If you've never seen it um, on Netflix, it was, I think, you know, talks about how the Bronx was burning. And out of that, different oh, cultures oh, and different okay. kids came together. White kids, black kids, Puerto Rican, Spanish, you name it. If you was in the Bronx, like that was that was part of like the culture that was forming. And so we, we looked like. It literally came from nothing. The fact that we're actually talking about it. And then now we move to like Kendrick has a pure Pulitzer Prize, which I never thought somebody in hip hop would have just for writing lyrics. Like when I saw that, I was like, yo, anything in life is possible for real. So mm -hmm. I'm stuck in the 90s. That bad. I'm stuck in the 90s. Like, like my style, you cannot enhance me. I'm, it's just, it's just me. You know what I'm saying? And, and most people say that's 96. 95 style, but I'm just stuck there. I'm 30 years old. You know what I mean? And there's nothing that's wrong with me. that because that's that that's a good year. That's a good year to be stuck in, though. Like I feel like we, I, I feel like Respect. we should go back to that. Respect, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I feel like you need to bring it to the 90 now. I mean, you got boot camp re-releasing oh. stuff. You got Wu Tang's 21st, 25th anniversary, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And so it's what well, better time than now to bring back the knowledge and, uh, in the, the key elements of hip hop. And I think that's why this show is really relevant. And even when I went to the store today to like my little grocery store of Sprouts around the way, I told these two kids at the counter, I was like, we're doing this thing. It's called hip hop homework. And they was like, Word. So I think there is a need and a niche, and like I think Black Seven, you had touched on this, is like that it's not being paid to because it's all just still that mainstream that you know they want to divide and, and just you know make money, and that's fine. Go make money, do what you got to do. But we still have communities that we have to build up. We still have you know things in our backyard. I'm from North Side of Chicago or Indiana, Chicago to South Side. I used to go to church. Like there's communities that have been just you know going down it's yeah really just a good time to bring that back up i think i just yeah. that's, that's, that's again you know what one thing i noticed too it's a lot of youngsters now that revert back to 90s music or they don't even like the newer the newer music but that's how you know we're going through uh, a shake up or we're going back to what it was it's like if bell bottoms can come back real hip hop can come back I'm just having you broke the keys and four finger rings came back yes 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 
Hey, yo. It's funny. I just want to say this real quick. Y'all y'all don't sleep on Black 7, man. Black 7 right there, that's a beast right there, man. For sure, for sure. That's all I got I to say about it's that. Little. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt that, but I just had to put that in there. You know what I mean? Nah, that, had just, that had to be said. That had to be said. That had to be said. I appreciate that, man. It's a little. But um, little. like I said, I, I, I wanted to talk about the, the cultural reassurance because I am noticing like a lot of a lot of like a lot of the younger generation, some of them, like you, you get the some of them are like, wow, like. They're listening to 30-year-old songs. And it's not all of them. Like, you get a lot of bullshit, but there's some where you're like, I'm, I'm walking by and I'm like, wait, what? Like, how do you know about that? Like, what's up? So I'm glad that that's kind of happening in a way because it's kind of like keeping the culture alive in a way because it's inspiring to people. And if they keep hearing it, something's going to happen. Like, something is going to happen. Someone's going to overhear it. Something is going to come back around. So something's going to be sampled. And that's what I'm hoping on. I'm hoping that somebody's like, you know what? This inspired me. I heard it at a later later stage of my life. But let's sample it. Let's turn it into something and make it happen. So I don't know. I don't know how you guys feel about that or, 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 or if you want to touch on that. I'm starting to see a lot more. I'm, I'm starting to see a lot more youngsters, man. And I'm a... Uh, I'm gonna shout out this one group they call Spaced Out Letters. And when I found out they age and they their raw hip hop that they like a they like they rap over a lot of lo-fi beats. And I was like, damn, how old are y'all? And they doing they doing they did an album call or a song called like 1990. And they mm. was like literally born in the 90s. So you you don't know the era of music that came out of there, but you're emulating it. And that's how I know that that after it's like when the body is sick. The body's going to find a way to rejuvenate itself. Wow. So right now, mm -hmm. in, in the state of emergency, wow. that the world is the world is sick, or the ears are sick, the masters are sick, of tired of hearing the bullshit. That they're finding ways to rejuvenate themselves, and and the old school hip hop is coming back in as a new. Somebody told me like, "Oh, that's a new style of hip hop." I'm like, "The fuck you mean? I've been doing this shit since I was like 14." <laughs> 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 that's true. That's he just not won't stop. Nah, that's definitely a fact. Um, like I said, um, yo, we have so much to talk about. We got, we could do this for hours. I could do this for days. Like like we could do this to the end. I believe so. What was that, Sherry? No, I said it's, it's like a cipher. I miss these days where you literally sit in cipher and you know. Just past, nice. you know, not a mic, but we sit in, it's like the Black Moon, you know, cover on, on the, uh, not Black Moon, I'm sorry, Smith & Wesson cover, where you sit and talk in a cypher. Uh, you know, it was fun. And this has been fun. And it's been yeah. honorable to actually have somebody, nice. you know, two, 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 just really good MCs, good dudes. You guys are real ones. I'm really blessed and thankful to just be a part of this conversation. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you guys. Part of it. Nah, definitely, yeah. definitely, definitely, definitely is an amazing experience, man. Yes, um, thank you for having me, Sherry. Thank you. Man, you guys all showed up, and it's just I, I, like an hour or two hours ago, I was like, nobody's gonna come, and so I'm really <laughs> glad that you guys did. And I'm really glad that we actually built this dialogue. And uh, I think it could be very powerful moving forward. I feel very strongly about the purpose, you know. I, 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 I totally y'all end, so ending the show, I don't know what's going on, but y'all got to send the contacts, man. Send the messenger, the Facebook, the Instagram, all that shit, man. You know what I'm saying? All Keep right. in touch. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We should definitely, honestly, we should do this more often, like, I, I think we it should be like a reoccurring thing, a reoccurring thing where we all just kind of like get along. Cause I I I, I saw hip hop Homer going one way, but I really like the vibe of this way too. Like I really like the it's the getting together. The church is about, boom back. Yeah, just getting it to talk about the culture. <laughs> but, um, can I say one thing uh, before Pinwu leaves? Um, Pinwu, are, are there any plugs or projects that you want to um? You know, put out there what streaming platforms are you on? How can we support good, conscious, I hate the word conscious, good music that's actually doing something um, and good people and good artists? Like, 
how can how can we go about doing that and, and, and getting to where you know what streaming platforms and all that what projects are you working with well you could take religion and call it not religion non-religion and that's how we could keep everything flowing and keep everything simple and together you know without there being a church service you could get to, together with your peoples and do the same right. exact thing a righteous game he didn't understand what i said Okay, so, so are you? So what, what are you I'm working on right now? What's your project? What's your upcoming, uh, your yes. upcoming single? Your upcoming album? Oh, mixed in LP. I'm sorry. <laughs> I no liked it though. I liked it though. It, it felt good. It felt like a vibe. It felt great. <laughs> yeah. I felt that shit came from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yo, definitely, definitely came straight from the heart. <laughs> yeah. But why don't you let us know a little something you're working on next, man? Like what? what what's up? Well, I'm I'm uh I was working on an EP, but me I'm gonna I'm gonna straight shoot some um some singles out there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I got mad features out there, you know, internationally and stuff on all type of uh platforms by the name of Pin Wu. Um, but I'm just trying to um work on some singles and release them shits. You know, get get the attention. That's what you can do. You know what I'm saying? That's the best thing to do if a uh, if a fuck boy nigga like six nine is getting all this attention and shit, you know, <laughs> so we, the, real, the real, you know the real niggas out here. Yeah, and I think, I Absolutely. think, I know, I know, I know that I know he's on Spotify and he's on Apple Music. I'm sure of it. Uh, YouTube, of course, but definitely try to go to the platforms that play the artists because I think that's hugely important. Let's get the artists paid for the royalties for the work that they do. And that's why I really feel strongly about, you know, connecting with y'all, but also collaboration is huge. You can only do so much through right. Texty Texty on SoundCloud. This is a great platform to do that. It just so happens that, you know, uh, Pinwoo works with OT, Pinwoo works with Black7. And now we have, you know, three amazing artists in the building. Mm -hmm. And that's just a great way to keep not only collaborating, but building the conversation in the culture and instead right. of just continuously tearing things down. So with that yeah, being said, I think that's up. a great yep. thing. Right. And uh, uh, peace, Pen, if you have to, Pen, if you have to bounce on um, much respect, one love. I want to bring one love back because I think that's really strong. It's really needed right now, you know, more than ever. And I don't think people say that enough. So I'm really, really, you know, when I say one love, I mean it. So. Hopefully, you know, peace, knowledge, and, and love, and one love to yourself and, and, and health and all that. So if you're gonna bounce. Thank you for being with us. Another um, another people, uh, people, um no. I'd love to have you back. Definitely come back anytime, man. Definitely welcome. Love to hear a lot from all of you guys, man. Definitely don't let this be the last time we talk. All right. Hell yeah. All right, and then you know what I'm saying? I'm make, I might have some raw material for you. You know what I'm saying? Next time you come on here. You know what I mean? <laughs> Same. Yeah, the OT came with it. Sure. Yeah, so, uh, right now. Yeah. Um, OT, do you have any project? You know, I know you have some things you're working yeah, on. You I'm working on, a, on, a, on an album uh, right now. Um, it's called the Diamond Cut album. Um, it's got, uh, like I said, uh, Red and Nine is going to be on there. Uh, Supreme Allah is on the album. We have that single out right now with those guys right now, uh, which is the coming. And, um, you know, I got uh, uh, Justice on there who was uh, worked with the uh, Army of the Pharaohs, Lord Jamar, and also um, some Wu-Tang members. Uh, he was on the brand Nubian album, uh, the 5% album with uh, Lord Jamar. And I'm also um, got doing a track, got a track coming out uh, on the album. Also, uh, Insane, the great legend Insane Poetry will be on the album as well um, for this new coming album. That's going to drop February 25th. And then um, I got a remix single coming out uh, with Percy P on February 17th. Okay. Wait a wow. Minute. Percy P, he, do, yeah. he, he not from New York, right? He's from the Bronx, the legendary Percy P. Yeah, wow. he, he worked with boys, um, Lobby, Spanish rapper. Spanish rapper yeah. from Washington Heights. Yeah, yeah. top dollar in Yeah, yeah. It's a crazy small world, man. It wow. really, really is. I think good yeah. music just and, stays around good music. I yeah. think that's, you know what I mean? Like, it's nice. It's right, like, right. A Southern slang, and that shit is just real tight with the fucking yeah. flow. Yeah, well, we all need to, like you said, we all need to, you know, um, 
keep up with each other. Like I said, if, if y'all want to, you know, still look me up. I'm OT the detonator. You know, y'all tell me y'all names so we don't all forget. And sometimes some people got, you know, certain letters or something in their name and they don't they spell their name differently from when the artist name is on Instagram. So I got to get that from you guys. And no I just want to say in that regard, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, that's it. I okay. just wanted to see, just, to see uh, you know, follow you guys back, I'll give you guys a follow, you know, and I do give out likes, you know, I'm not one of those rappers that don't like to give out likes to other rappers on Instagram, because I know it'd be a lot of haterism on Instagram. <laughs> and I don't want you guys to worry about Miss Kurt. Um, Miss Kurt, honestly, everything's gonna be linked with down. All names are gonna be still, name. I don't see it. It's it's gonna so, be cut and dry. So we all just stay where we need to be with each other. You know what I mean? So right. not, right. yeah. And and I want what I want to do is link um projects you guys already done, so we can just you know what I mean. Send the people to to your page. Send the people to your to your music to your sound, so they don't forget. You know what I mean? Right. So. Anybody else working on any, anything? Anything they don't want to get out? Well, I got uh, I just finished my my group album, new chapter, uh, distinction without a difference. What I did was I did something different. I dropped the album in all singles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I dropped the whole album with all singles, and then at the end of That's the album, right. I was gonna put it together as a whole. So it it, it kind of each song was able to get its different exposure. I got a joint out was that's coming out with Pin Boo that I'm working on like literally right now. When y'all mm -hmm. called me, I was literally working on mixing that joint down. Uh, it's called Live or Not. Um, I got I do got my solo projects coming out. Um, I got I got a joint that's about to drop with uh with uh with Rugged Monk from Black Knights, West Coast Killer B, um, Christ Bearer. I'm supposed to be doing a uh, producing a joint for Christ Bearer on on his up and coming album. Um, and I'm also working on a, a joint with Solomon Chow too. That's that's coming out. That's dope. Thanks to Pim. Oh wow! Wow! Yeah. Wow. And then Pim Wu's part of the Solomon Chow's chamber, if I'm not mistaken, from what we were talking right, about the other day. Right. So it's crazy how the world, you know, connects. That's for sure. That's awesome. Dominicano, mommy. Dominicano, mommy. <laughs> that's Solomon Chow, Dominicans. You know what I mean? We're like the niggas, right. the niggas from fucking um, Espanola. <laughs> Straight up. I mean, it's not really literally like that, but I'm just saying, you know, that's as, as a term that hip hoppers can relate to and, and understand. You know what I mean? That's slang. Oh, God. oh, I forgot. Oh, I almost forgot. And I got an upcoming joint from uh, C Now Da Vinci from uh, Midwest Killer B. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow! Uh, yeah, that he's actually he's gonna bless he's gonna bless me with a verse on my on my uh, on my group's album, which I which much appreciated. Shout out to uh, C Now Da Vinci from uh, Colorado West, uh, Midwest Killer Bees. Yeah. Wow! Okay. Midwest, so big. <clears throat> okay. Um, you know, send send me all of your links. I'm gonna start digging back in the crates again. It literally has opened up a Pandora's box. So please, we'll. Put them on the playlist. We'll share them with the artists that we talked about. You know, the All My Wu Tang and, and all of the other artists. I try to write as many of them down. And when we get it all together and edited, we'll make sure you guys have your, you know, ads and all of that in the socials um, as well. So just a little FYI there. So. Another all thing. Right. Um, hopefully this isn't your guys' last time on the show. I want to hear top fives. Um, I definitely want um a couple songs so we could throw on a on the hip hop homework playlist. I definitely, we definitely have some more to discuss, guys. You know what I mean? So, and I feel like you guys got into the vibe, the general feeling of things. So, I definitely want you guys to, to be a part of it, too. You know? I, I got a top five I'll throw out there. Yo, Freddie versus Jason is definitely top five. Okay. Okay. Jason. You know, Freddie versus Jason, you got the Bronx Bomber hat on. Yo, Freddie versus Jason, dog. <laughs> Freddie versus Jason. That's one of my one of my favorites. Number five is Jada. Number four is Fabulous. Not because he's Dominican. It's just it's just Fabulous. Is just ill, you know. I recorded. You know? Absolutely. Excellent. You know that then comes then comes Pac. Then comes Biggie. Not only because I'm from the 
East Coast. I just fuck with Biggie more. You know what I mean? I, I that nigga. It's the East Coast thing. I think coming up. You know what I mean? He knows about standing on the corner and selling rocks. He Absolutely. knows about all that. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And number one is Big Pun because if Big Pun was alive right now, none of these niggas would stand a chance. You know what I'm wow. saying? You know. Yeah. He'd be pulling the Mac in the back of the act, all of that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, straight up. I'm talking about packing the Mac in the back of the act. <laughs> all of that. Pack. Back in the back of the act. Back in the back of the back. Of the back. back. <laughs> I'm going to have to uh, shout out my top five. I'm going to go with uh, Nas. Uh, I'm going to go with Big L. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Timbo King, a uh, Wu-Tang affiliate, of course. I'm going to go with another Wu-Tang affiliate, the Holocaust. And uh, then I'm going to go with my man. Then I'm going to go with my man, Cannabis. Oh. Oh, okay. wow. Yo, hey, wow. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. When you say Holocaust... He's the from the West Coast, time, so I got to know him. Wait, the first time I freestyled with Holocaust was 97, and when I tell you bar, bar, bar none, I can't do nothing with Holocaust. Shout out to man. Holocaust. Shout out class. to Holocaust. Shout out. Oh, man. Yeah, he's a yeah. beast. Yeah. Next, who else got a top five? Jerry, let me hear what you got. Okay, I, I literally, it used to be static forever, but now um, I'm just trying to come with something, you know, that's right and also on time. Um, like I said, Rock Kim stays in number one. We'll always stand number one as far as my top five. Most Def, Yasin Bey, number two. Uh, Jean Grey, who's, I think, oh, one of the most oh. slept on female yeah. entities of all times. If you haven't seen it, yeah. watch Big Words. Look it up. Find the movie. If you're 30 or above, that movie speaks to you more than you possibly know. And if the get down didn't make you cry, I don't really want to know you. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, and then Guru, which I throw, I, you know, people question my thing with Guru all the time. I mean, he just had, like, not at all, only the knowledge, the tempo, the monotone. And then he went out and branched to jazz you know, and, and really brought it back to the jazz. So Guru... And then uh, Black Thought from the Roots. I, I, okay. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna wind it up with that. Um, and I just want to big two things real quick since I have the so the spot. Uh, Mumu Fresh, also a new female artist, amazing Tiny Desk series. The teacher arrives when the student is ready, and I think now is really the time. I think there are people that are actually waiting to see artists like like y'all. So with that being said, the last thing I want to say: peace and love to Dilla. And and that's that's me. I'm 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 it. I'm done. Okay. Okay. No, okay. Um. Listen, my top five. I think I think me and Penn are like like brothers or something like that. I think it's a, a East Coast thing. Um. Definitely Nas. Nas, <laughs> Nas is definitely one of my top five. Uh, Jada. Jada, come on, man. Jada got to be up there. That's that's, that's my dude. I grew up with the dude. Um, Biggie, because there's not one song that Biggie doesn't say that I don't know every lyric to. Um, and like I said, just the greats, man. Like every everybody after that, I'm a super big Common fan, and I know that's kind of taking it into a different direction. But just uh -huh. just for the sake just for the sake of diversity, I'm gonna say I would say Common's up there. Um, definitely a, a Eric B fan, and and you know what I mean. So like like I'm kind of like I'm trying to like trying to tiptoe around what you guys already said because we kind of like got the same people. Um, so yeah, like I said, like that's that's pretty much it for me. I think we lost somebody, so yeah, OT, we lost head out. Mm -hmm. OT, yeah, OT head out. So like I said, I feel like this is a good place to 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 leave it, guys. Like I really do, man. Like I think I think we got to think about big pun. I think you hey, on, big pun. Yo, big pun, I'm telling you, to that 50 he cent rap of everybody get like your no thought off. Because in real life, I'll blow your motherfucking head off. Yo, 50. <laughs> Yo. Thing, that 50. Yo, 50 ain't had shit to say. He never responded to that nigga. Nah, he can't, though. He can't. Big pun was about that shit, too, though. He was about that bullshit. About that I life seen for real. this documentary, he was hip-hop. That nigga pistol. Not because he pistol whipped his wife in the face or nothing like that. It's just that nigga lived what he's 
rapped exactly. about. Yeah, it wasn't a song for him. It was a life that he mm-hmm. rapped about. It yeah. wasn't a it wasn't a song that he wanted but to make. Still, he was just... he was homeless and he came up. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Let me ask you a question love. since I got you right here. Have you heard his son Christopher Reeves? And have you heard him kind of like? Lay out his father's like carpet and demons out for everybody to hear. How do you feel about that? Yo, that shit is fire. It's fire. The way he delivers it is fire. Yeah. I mean, it sounds tight. You know what I'm saying? So I could respect it. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, I ask because there's some people that that hold the coin and they're like, well, that kind of tarnished his name in a way, like because you know they they kind of have him as. All right, so in everybody's head, you don't meet your, your your legends, you don't meet your heroes because of that, because you know they got real life demons. So some would say that they he kind of shed a light on somebody and kind of like took them down a couple notches in some eyes. What do you think about that? I think that you know it's like, for example, right? For example, I'm just throwing this out there, like young dirty bastard. Yeah, he sounds just like his pops. You know what I'm saying? Just about to say that. Talk about generational. And it's it worked out for him because he got better. I heard his first shit that he came out with. He reached out to me. We talked and everything. I heard his shit. I wasn't feeling it. The shit Mm. that he's dropping now, that shit is is fire. Okay. I mean, he stepped his game up. We even had a, a argument a long time ago about that. And um, you know, I was just being honest. But now as I can you should, eat them. as you should, yeah. It's nice. You know what I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. Can I get anybody else? Anybody else want to shed some light on that? The only thing I could say to that is if you haven't seen the tiny desk with Wu Tang and um young ODB, then that's something to definitely check out on, on YouTube, you know, to, to get a feeling for, for what he, you know, what he is, what he's doing through his father's legacy. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's amazing how generationally, it's generational fabric is just passed on. So that, again, just talks about what we were talking about. Oh, one thing I wanted to say real quick, real, real quick. Um, Killer Army, one of the dopest slept on albums of all time, I think. It helped me graduate high school. If it wasn't in the Hiding that in my headphones in my, my class where I'm writing my notes. I don't know where I'd be to fast forward 22 years later. And I'm, I, you know, again, I'm having a conversation with y'all, but Supreme Allah Magnetic is also a standing member, from what I understand, is, is as far as Killer Army. And uh, it's amazing how, you know, it's just a small world and we come back around to where we're at. Um, oh, last thing, he has a project coming out March 29th. Uh, his EP is dropping. See you soon, volume one. So I want to make sure that I. Put that out there as well because I'm working on promoting that album in, in that project as well. So Absolutely. that's all. I'm gonna leave it after that. Yo, this shit is popping, son. Yo, this shit was a good show, son. I think so. <laughs> Thank you. Thank now you. it's time to turn the street. Look, I mean, the street lights is coming on right street. now, so we gotta turn the lights on in the building. But we still got it done. <laughs> <You know? laughs> we got like we had like four different time zones. We got I got no on. cats for days. Yo, what? Oh, yeah. Everybody you guys said top five. Everybody you guys were talking about in the past, I got it all written down. Nice. I, I heavy need to do his homework, yeah. man. I'm Yo, out. Good <laughs> shit. Yo, good shit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely Again, was, thank yo. you. Thank you, thank you, Black Seven, for being present and being a special guest. Black. The fact that it got you interested enough to be here, like Pim told you about it, you wanted to come and actually show up, man. That's, that's all. That's all. That's, that's life. Amazing. Absolutely. Much love. Much love. Black. No doubt, man. No doubt. Killer B love, man. Pim Wu turned me on. I was like, oh, fuck it. I'm down. As, hey, I'm just, I was just so happy not to be doing too much today. Mm-hmm. But so it is is- from that, you know, it's like you attack one B and the whole swarm is jumping on you. I hear that. <laughs> that's how I hear be. that. Humans be that way. Humans. You know, that's right. why be important that's to right. this earth. Let's actually, like, swarm in the, you know, the swarm is real. Like, let's swarm in the right way this time, you know, and actually do positive things. So that's 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 really what, you know, Wu Tang stood for for me, honestly. And each member had just a different voice, and we all had something that they needed to hear, you know. Like I think that was yeah, yep. you saying you had they we got something they need to hear. It's true. 
You know what I mean? You tell somebody peace that you don't know, they gonna respond peacefully. Right. Big right. Facts. Big facts. And, oh, um, just real quick. So before we wrap, we're gonna uh, we meaning I'm pointing at the moderator, moderator and heavy. He's gonna edit it down. We're gonna cut it up and make it right. And uh, as soon as we get that going, I'll make sure you know we either of us reaches out and sends those links and you know the hashtags and all that. And so. Hopefully we'll get eyes on us and we'll also get eyes on the you guys' projects and what you're working on and, and artists and stuff as well. So oh, yeah, yeah bro. That's that is the and Absolutely. thank you. I'm wordy, I'm a wordy VI wordsmith. So I think thank you for like being patient with my long ass texts and long <laughs> ass DMs. I, just, I really in my heart, I really wanted to get it right. So I, I was literally just was shook, like shook on shook. <laughs> Thanks for showing up. And 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 you you like like most of Death said, you could have been in them anywhere in the world, but you're here rocking with me right now. Like time is the right. most valuable thing that we have. It is finite. Money is infinite. Yeah, you know, cash rules everything around is great, but like the time that we spend together is extremely valuable. You guys could have been anywhere. So I'm really thankful for y'all being here for real. Absolutely. Oh yeah, I'm I'm doing yeah, me oh, and I'm oh, doing oh, this at the same time. So it's all good. Ooh, you know what I mean? Last my creative juices, I swear, if I can get Pinwu in a room with a crystal, I'm thinking that would be an amazing collaboration. I just need with to put that out there. I'm going to get him as soon as I can. He's that working with Jay Furman. That, thing, that is pure fire. If you don't know who look a crystal Jesus. is, look him up. What's that? Oh. I said, does he look like Jesus Christ? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Crystal, he, he, he got a little, he got a little uh, a ghost faceness to him. I think, little maybe, oh. yeah, he got a little ghost face to him. Uh huh. <laughs> hey, Crystal, I see you. Okay, but that's, that's I just, I'm, I'm. <laughs> oh, the internet went down for OT. He said just in the in the Instagram um, DM real quick. So he said sprint, the internet man. is garbage, but this has been working out really good. Yeah, absolutely. So I think I think that I think yeah. it's a good place to leave it. About to be out. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, absolutely, oh. y'all fellas hey, again, yo. man. Y'all pushing a dream, man. That's amazing, yo. I definitely is amazing. I appreciate it. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm gonna go back to living a normal life. Yo, y'all <laughs> 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 you know I mean? have our, our uh, no, alter ego for no sure. Hit me up in a few minutes, I right, be. You already oh, yeah. know. Like, be alike and see alike. Peace. Right. All right, All right brother. Peace. One. Oh, All Black, right, yo, guys. thank you. Black, man, you had an amazing day. Yo, Sherry, I was. This is me and you. It's me and you, yo. That was a good show, man. I'm positive. I feel real good about it. Right. Like, I, I, I'm not going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> you say you're not going to cry, but I don't know. <laughs> Um, I mean, you was having a bad day, but to see you smile, like, look. Yo, I'm, I'm, I'm ear to ear, man. I was having a real bad day. Well, this is amazing. I had a great time. I had a great I mean, time. Don't you start, because if you cry, then I cry, and we both crying, and this is recorded. <laughs> right? This is the, this is the, what do you call it? The, uh, the uncut raw version. We just, you know, leave this on the floor. I pinned it on your we'll Facebook. In, it's gonna be a thumbnail. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. and and I just we get to do this a lot, like a lot now. Like we got, uh, yeah. You mean we, we? You mean we gotta talk music with artists and have a good time and call it work? Come on, son. <laughs> Come on, I son. literally wanted to be like Big Tigga and like Ed Lover oh, nice. and, and 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 all of that since I can't even remember. Like I even you know the VJs or whatever. I feel it's crazy because I feel like um, the whole lyric side is kind of like not where the show is going. No. I that feel like I feel like the vibe and just talking about music and the direction and what we're... I feel like that's more official. I feel like if we come up with topics, like kind of like... It's crazy how it all fell into each other, right? Yeah. Like, what about Church of the Boom Bap? I don't know. We can brainstorm. I'm just saying... Um, 
but yeah, like it wasn't even really about the lyrics. We didn't really go in, into any any of that at all. I I I'm trying to digest. Honestly, I feel like really <laughs> lost for words. <laughs> but everybody showed up. Everybody showed yo, up to the party. I yo, Sherry, thank you again, honey. Yo, I had a great time, man. Like it was it was dope, man. And I saw, I know you put a lot of work into it, so. Um, you know, like, 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 uh, like Prane said, when he raps, it doesn't feel like work for me again, it doesn't feel like work. And that's where I get emotional because this is always, this is always what I've ever wanted. And so I wouldn't, I wouldn't have <laughs> got you. We're going to, we're going to be like accepting Grammys, just like, you know, like whatever, whatever music video awards directors get will be just be like oh my god <laughs> seriously i see that like, i see that that's possible and this is the start of that it can be but it's definitely fun for right now and thanks for all the thought and effort like if it wasn't for you and your concept and, and actually like contacting me you took the you took the step so it's just honestly gonna get better from here honestly and i didn't go into too many tangents i didn't think i feel like i was my authentic self yet um Connected I well. Hopefully, I didn't suck that bad. I thought I I I, I was done. I was doing the best I could. Um, no, you were great. Obviously, um, I feel like as as the episodes progress and the more experience we get, then I feel like we'll really find like our own niche and kind of find out like where is that. It has like a breakfast club kind of vibe to it. Yeah. And but I'm okay. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. But it's authentic. It's, it's real. It's not and not only is it authentic, it's actually like real people. This is where it, it strikes a chord with me because growing up, you look at the artists as artists. Like they're like comic book figures. Like Wu Tang, for me, they were people, but you didn't see the, 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 the grind and the struggle behind them actually being human beings. So there's the, the person and the artist. And so this gives, that takes away that veil, I think. And. No. Not so that. well put. So well put. You know, and I think that's important. And then to build collaborations between artists that might not normally through only SoundCloud. I don't know if there's any other. And those guys, I don't think are going to jump on a rap battle app. You know what I'm saying? But for us to be able to be the, the conduit, like I was saying, to tie all of those pieces together, it's there's really no better time than now. So... Yeah, a wordy bit word Smith. Anyway, but yeah, so yeah, yeah, it's it's gonna be good. So when's the next one? <laughs> well, today's uh Thursday. I wanna sh honestly I, I could I could do this for a while. Um, um street lamps come on. I, I was dead ass serious. Like street lamps just came on and we still <laughs> I'm, I, I'm I I'm thinking Monday, man. Like I'm thinking maybe like Monday we shoot for another one. See I I don't. I wouldn't mind to do a show with them again and and get out some of the shit that we haven't been able to. Right. Because it was like, only. Well, oh, I'm sorry. Nah, it was only an hour and twenty minutes long when I when we stopped discussing, discussing, and then, um, Pin Uh, yeah, it was. It's it's an hour and forty two minutes right now. Oh my. Based off of this, I've been saying I've been thinking it, but we could literally do documentaries. Or you you were recording this whole time, right? No, you better have been because otherwise we don't have shit. <laughs> so I came in late. No, it says Julio is recording the call. No, no, I'm record I was recording it, but I thought I came into into the conversation late. I no, I don't think so. I we better this is like one of those things where you take a fit of photograph and you gotta check the footage. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna end the conversation and I'm gonna send it, send it to you. We'll check that. Yeah, let's let's go, and then we'll talk sometime later. But 